So you've just received your Silicon Labs EM35X development kit, or maybe you're thinking about buying one, and you want to know what it's all about. Well in this video I'll walk you through the dev kit setup process, including getting all the hardware set up, accessing the latest software versions on our support portal, installing all the tools, and getting you ready to do some development. Now let's dive into our kit and begin. As we open the box, we're greeted by the red fold-out copy of the EM35X dev kit quick start guide, as well as the Silicon Labs happy fun ball an SMA-style antenna connector, which we can use to couple an external antenna to those modules that have an RF test port rather than an onboard antenna, some 10-pin ribbon cables, some 12-pin ribbon cables, and a collection of three peripheral breakout boards for prototyping, each with an EM357 based or EM3588 based CEL module mounted to it. Then we have three of these rectangular boxes, which are Ethernet-enabled serial wire and JTAG-capable debug programmer devices called Ember Debug Adapters, or ISA3s. There's also a selection of various other CEL EM35X modules in a separate box. A collection of region-specific plug adapters to power each ISA3. And then the fully packaged Netgear ProSafe 8-port power over Ethernet networking switch with four PoE-capable ports. Unwrap the package on the cardboard insert, and we find the Quick Start Guide, an Ember desktop installation CD, and a yellow card pointing us to a free download of the appropriate IAR Embedded Workbench ARM compiler, and IDE, that this EM35X platform requires. If you ordered the EM35X-Dev-IAR part number for your kit, rather than the EM35X-Dev part number, your kit includes a permanent license for the IAR EW ARM toolchain at a discounted price versus purchasing this license separately. Otherwise, you can initiate a temporary evaluation license after installing the EW ARM tools. Then we have a set of Ethernet cables for each ISA3, USB cables for each ISA3, the plug adapter for the Netgear switch, a set of battery packs for field testing of the modules. As you unfold the Quick Start Guide, be sure to note the hardware ID page affixed to the back side, as this contains a kit registration number that you'll need later in the setup process. The first step in the quick start guide is to unpack everything, which we started to do already, but you may want to use the graphical checklist to verify that everything is included that was supposed to be. Note that in more recent kits, the Ember desktop CD has been omitted in favor of an online download, since most laptops tend to lack CD-ROM drives these days. You can even peek in the CEL module box to verify you have the six different module variants. Some have an RF front end module that provides a power amplifier, PA, and a low noise amplifier, LNA, and some have an onboard antenna versus an external antenna connector for testing. Once you've unpacked everything and verified that you have all the materials, you can start plugging things in so that your software will have something to talk to. First get the Netgear PoE switch unpacked and grab the appropriate regional power supply plug adapter as needed. Plug the power supply into AC power with the provided cord. Then plug that into the back of the PoE switch. All the LEDs should illuminate briefly, but then only the power LEDs should remain lit. Now get each of your ISA3s out of the packaging and grab an Ethernet cable for each one. Although there's a USB connector on the back of each ISA3, the Ember desktop software that manages these devices is expecting to use Ethernet for control and data capture, so you need all of these connected to the local area network. As you plug in each ISA3, make sure you're plugging it into one of the PoE-enabled ports, 1 through 4, on the PoE switch, and make sure the PoE indicator LED turns on at the switch. You should also see some LED activity at the ISA3s. Also make sure that each ISA3 has its target power selection switch set to the internal or INT position to ensure it can power the attached board when the time comes. Next we're ready for the breakout boards and modules. Don't forget you'll also need to supply your own Ethernet cable to connect the PoE switch to your computer or to a local LAN that your computer can access. Unwrap all three breakout boards and for each one grab a 10-pin ribbon cable, also known as the InSight port connector, and a 12-pin ribbon cable, also known as the Data Emulation Interface, or DEI connector, and attach the 10-pin ribbon cable between the InSight port on the ISA3 and the 10-pin header on either the breakout board or the EM35X module. Either one is okay. Attach the 12-pin ribbon cable to the DEI port on each ISA3, 
and the other end to the 12-pin DEI connector on the edge of the breakout board. Once you've got three setups all connected and indicating power via the red LED on the far edge of the breakout board, you're ready to move on to the software installation and setup. At this point, the quick start guide I'm using wants me to install Ember Desktop and ISA3 utilities from the included CD. But what if your kit didn't come with an Ember Desktop CD? Or you don't have a CD-ROM drive handy? Or maybe you just prefer to download all the latest software versions from our support portal rather than spend time installing something that might be outdated. In that case, we can go online and grab the latest Ember Zenet EM35X software content from the downloads area, which we'd need to do anyway for the IAR Embedded Workbench Compiler IDE installation. First, we need to register a new Silicon Labs website account. The easiest way to create a new account is to try logging into the support portal, https colon slash slash siliconlabs.force.com, and then clicking Create an Account towards the bottom of the page. Enter your name and email address and a password of your choosing, and submit the form and you'll be greeted with a note explaining that you now need to go through an email confirmation step to finalize your account creation process. So log into your mail client and look for an email from sso-support at scilabs.com. Don't forget to check your spam filters if you can't find the email. Now click on the confirmation link or paste the URL into your browser and verification page should come up, which includes an option to log in with your new account. So click log in to your account and input your credentials when the prompt comes up. It will start you on the www site, but for fastest access to the new software content, you'll want to enter the following URL for EM35X kit registration, https colon slash slash siliconlabs.force.com slash kit registration, all one word, no spaces, capital K, capital R. When you get to this page, enter your 20-digit kit serial number, including the dashes, for a total of 24 characters. You can find this in the lower right corner of your hardware ID page that's attached to the back of your fold-out quick start guide. If you've entered all the numbers and dashes correctly, the Register Your Kit Now button should take you to a page that confirms proper registration and gives you a link to the latest Ember Zenet software. Follow that link and now you'll see a list of all the relevant software for your EM35X development kit. You'll also now have a Software Releases tab across the top of the page beside the Cases tab, so you can use that to get this access controlled software content later on. Open up each of these software release pages and scroll down to the associated content area for links to the individual installers. On the resulting page, click the download link in the upper left to start the download. You'll need to download and install in any order the Ember Desktop tool for network analysis and application configuration, the Ember Zenet stack installer, which includes embedded code and libraries for the networking stack, the Ember application framework, and the host side code for use with network coprocessor architectures, the IAR embedded workbench compiler toolchain for ARM, specifically version 7.30.1, unless your Ember Zenet stack release notes indicate something different, and the latest ISA3 utilities package, which provides the flash loader support for EM3XX platforms and provides the drivers for the ISA3 debug adapters. Note that the IAR toolchain is not required for host-based application development for network coprocessor implementations. In that case, you'd use whatever toolchain is appropriate for your host architecture. At this point, you'll probably be waiting on the remainder of your 200 megabyte Ember desktop download and the 700 megabyte IAR embedded workbench download, but you can at least go ahead and install the Ember Zenet stack software and the ISA3 utilities package while you wait. I started with ISA3 utilities. After a quick install, you can view the doc set for the utilities. The release notes are brief, but you might be interested in the EM3XX utilities guide linked from the documentation page, as that explains what the utilities can do and how to access them from a command prompt. Now install the Ember Zenet stack in a similar fashion. Note that the Ember Zenet installer combines Zigbee Pro stack software and RF4CE stack software, and it has all the necessary files to support the single chip, SOC platform approach, as well as the host application plus EZSP network coprocessor development approach. After installing the stack, check out the documentation index suggested by the installer. There's a large collection of documents to educate yourself while you're waiting for the remaining tools to download, but a great starting point is the pair of PDFs containing the Ember Zenet release notes and application framework release notes, which you'll note are also available separately from the installer via the documents list on the Ember Zenet software release page on the support portal. For first-time users, these documents provide details about what's in the package, 
how to install all the software, and how to do some initial setup tasks. For users updating to new versions of this software, the release notes provide important details about new, changed, or removed features or interfaces to aid your migration of existing applications, and the release notes also list out fixed issues and known issues since the previous release of EmberZNet. Other documents of interest found in this package include data sheets and reference manuals, technical specifications with schematics, API references for the stack and the application framework, descriptions of commands supported by the framework's command line interface, and a collection of user's guides and application notes. Some great starting points for developers are the Application Framework Developer's Guide, UG102, and the Application Development Fundamentals Guide, UG103, which is divided into volumes like an encyclopedia. The EM35X Developer Kit User's Guide, UG110, also serves as a useful reference in understanding how to use various features of the kit hardware and software. As for Ember Desktop, follow through the usual program installation prompts, wait for the files to copy, and after that's done, you can launch Ember Desktop if you'd like. There's a README file as well, but if you want the comprehensive documentation around how to use the Ember Desktop UI, a better reference is the Ember Desktop User's Guide PDF that gets installed to the same directory as the Ember Desktop executable. There's also an Ember App Builder User's Guide PDF that focuses exclusively on the GUI elements of our Application Builder tool, App Builder, which is a graphical interface used to configure your initial projects for stack-based development on Silicon Labs' wireless platform. Even without the compiler installed yet, you can begin working with the nodes in Ember Desktop via the ISA3 debug adapters, but if you don't have a DHCP server available on your Ethernet network for these ISA3s, they probably won't have obtained IP addresses and therefore won't be accessible to Ember Desktop. So in that case, you'll need to follow the optional step in the Quick Start Guide, which involves assigning static IP addresses manually to each of your debug adapters. First, grab one of the supplied USB cables from the kit box. You'll need this to configure the ISA3 since you don't have Ethernet set up yet for managing the node via Ember Desktop. However, once Ember Desktop can see your ISA3s, you'll be able to use an admin console to make any future changes to the debug adapter configuration. After connecting the ISA3 to your PC via USB and removing the ISA3's Ethernet cable, make sure you know which IP address range and subnet mask are appropriate for your static IP configuration. You can check this via the IPv4 Properties dialog for your connection. Now launch a command prompt and type in the em3xx underscore isa commands indicated in your quick start guide. Note that this program should be in your path after isa3 utilities installation, so you don't need to be in a specific directory to run this program, but the default paths are indicated in the quick start guide in case you're having problems. If you aren't sure what IP addresses to use for the IP static command, check with your network administrator. In most cases, the first time you use the ISA3 utilities with your new adapters, they will receive a firmware upgrade to bring the hardware in sync with the software. If for some reason this upgrade doesn't complete successfully the first time, or the desired command doesn't execute, just run your EM3XX ISA command again, and things should work okay. After setting the IP address and disabling DHCP, Cycle power to the adapter by removing the USB cable and going back to PoE, and then you can ping your adapter's new IP address to make sure the address change applied successfully and ensure your PC can successfully route packets to that ISA3. Repeat for all ISA3s before moving on to Ember Desktop. Remember that you can use the up and down arrows in the command prompt to go back to previous command lines and reuse them. Note that the ISA3s do require remote access to several TCP and UDP ports, so if your network has an aggressive firewall in place, you may need to talk to someone about unblocking these ports. For the list of specific ports used, see the Knowledge Base article in our community entitled What TCP slash UDP ports are required for the Ember Desktop Adapter to operate with Ember Desktop. Now that our hardware is set up, we can begin using Ember Desktop. The first thing we're asked to do when we start the program is to register for automatic updates by entering a Silicon Labs portal username. You don't have to do this, but doing so will allow Ember Desktop to perform minor updates from an online server without you having to always grab the 200 megabyte installer from the portal. The other first time option we're presented with is the choice to either start first time setup or continue to Ember Desktop. Even though it might seem tempting to run the first time setup wizard, especially if your quick start guide mentions it, I generally tell customers to skip this and go right to one of the app builder based exercises available on our community site. 
such as the Zigbee Home Automation Scenario or the Zigbee Light and Switch Tutorial. Those exercises allow you to get an experience configuring, building, loading, and running something, whereas the pre-built libraries provided by the Setup Wizard are either not relevant to Zigbee development or are no longer indicative of the current application design and interaction process you'd get from our modern application framework. After continuing past the first time setup screen, we're greeted with the standard Ember desktop view, which shows a list of our detected debug adapters on the left in an adapters view. At this point, you should have three adapters listed, and you can expand the properties of each one to see its IP address and the type of Silicon Labs chip that it's connected to. If you're not seeing all the adapters you expect, you may need to change your adapter discovery preferences, which is done by going to File, Preferences in the main menu, and then drilling down to Adapters, Inside Adapters, if necessary, add your adapter's Ethernet IP range to the subnet list and check the Use checkbox to activate it. You may also need to check the Include All Network Interfaces checkbox at the top of the dialog, especially if your computer has both wired and wireless Ethernet devices installed or a virtual interface such as used with VPN software. Apply your changes, exit the dialog, and then find the Discover Adapters button, which looks like a flashlight or torch, and click that to refresh the list of discovered devices. The last step you'll want to perform to get ready for development is to tell Ember Desktop about the new Ember Zenet stack you just installed so that it can be used in the app builder part of the tool. You'll need to do this anytime you install a new version of Ember Zenet to a new directory, as indicated in the Ember Zenet stack release notes. Begin by going to File, Preferences, and then click on App Builder. After a moment, you should be able to click on the Add button, and then you can browse to the folder where you installed your new Ember Zenet release. If it's added correctly, the new stack should show up with a list of included frameworks in the Preferences view. Now you can exit the Preferences and begin using your stack and App Builder by saying File, New, Application Framework Configuration, and then choosing one of the provided frameworks, such as ZCL Application Framework for Zigbee Pro applications, and selecting which stack platform configuration you want to use with that framework. You can either start from a fresh configuration, or you can load a configuration template from a set of sample scenarios offered for common use cases among the different Zigbee application profiles. By now, hopefully your IIR embedded workbench download is done and you can start installing it. Note that the IIR installer will first need to self-extract some setup files, and then you'll have to choose Install IAR Embedded Workbench from the resulting setup menu. Go through the usual installer dialogs to get the installation underway, and then you'll have about 45 minutes to wait before your input is required. While you're waiting for the install to complete, now would be a good time to head over to community.scilabs.com and check out some of the online Zigbee concept training videos in the tutorial section so you can be ready for development when the time comes. After your IAR EW ARM installation is done, you're ready to begin building applications for the EM35X SOC platform. A good starting point might be the Zigbee Home Automation light, switch, and gateway scenarios included in the Ember Zenet stack installation and offered up as starting points when you begin a new app builder configuration from within Ember Desktop. Look on community.scilabs.com for this Zigbee Home Automation scenario demo. For more information on the kit hardware and how to use the materials found in the EM35X dev kit, you'll obviously want to refer to your own copy of EM35X dev kit quick start guide, also called QSG101, found in PDF form in the Ember Zenet installer or in paper form in your kit package. But beyond that, you should also check out the EM35X dev kit user's guide, UG110, which explains how to do a lot of the most common development and setup tasks with your kit as well as the various technical specifications, TS6, 7, and 8, for the breakout board, ISA3, and radio modules, respectively, and the various data sheets and reference manuals for the chips themselves. You'll also want to take a look at Part 8 of our Application Development Fundamentals Guide, UG103, which talks about the software tools available as part of the EM35X development process. If you're ready to start thinking seriously about application development, check out UG103 Part 3, which discusses design choices for software developers, and UG102, the Application Framework Developer's Guide, which discusses how to use our App Builder tool to set up our Ember application framework for use in building Zigbee and RF4CE-based applications. Thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing what you build with your EM35X development kit.